Hello, Dr. Padijo here. Today we're going to learn a little bit more about masking. Uh, now, I already have a video that discusses how to automate masks in a photo set for turntable photogrammetry, uh, but this one differs a little bit in that we're actually going to take an extra photo of the empty scene and use that as a background instead of manufacturing something in paint. So I'm going to go into this project here, and as you can see, we have our three folder structure as usual. I'm going to open up our photos folder where we have everything um, divided into our chunk one and chunk two. So for a turntable, we have our two halves that will end up aligning and merging together in Agisoft. And let's take a look at chunk one. So here you can see all of our photos for our photo set. Right? And then there's one photo here right at the beginning of taking that shot where it's just an empty scene. So we basically remove the object that we're going to be 3D modeling. And we leave it so it's just whatever is actually holding that object. So in this case, the marker palette is still there, and so is this little uh, ceramic brace here that's holding the vessel. So if you look at the next shot, the vessel is then inserted, so we have our object in the scene, and then we continue on from there. All right? So that is what we're going to use to mask the rest of these photos. We're going to have the computer use the empty scene to do that. But to get us started, we have to prepare this file. Um, we have to name it something known and save it elsewhere. So let's go ahead and rename this to, let's see, this is chunk one, so I'll say chunk one background. All right, I'm gonna do it. Chunk one background, and I'm gonna cut it out of here. And what I like to do is just place it right inside the photos folder. So this is chunk one background. And chunk two, if we took it in the same way, if we did the same type of photo capture, we'll have an empty scene. In this case, there was no ceramic brace because the vessel could actually just balance itself on the, on the opening. So we just have an empty scene. So what I'm gonna do is rename this. I'm working with chunk two. Chunk two background. All right, and I'm going to cut that out of there. I'm going to paste it with this guy in the photos folder, so this photos directory. And this just allows us to remember where we put these masks, right? Or at least the, the files that we're going to use to mask, the background files. All right, so in order to get this working, I'm going to go ahead and open up our project here. Now, I have already run this before, so I'm just going to be opening and, and looking through all of this and, and working through this with you. Um, but as you can see, I already have the alignment done. My photos are already in here, and I've done all kinds of work with them. Um, however, just to kind of get you back into the mindset of this original workflow, you want to start out by pulling in your photos, right? So they pop up over here, and then you want to process them and prepare them for an alignment by going to Tools, Markers, detect markers and then hit OK here making sure that these are the same and what that's going to do is make it so that all of these little markers on your marker palette are detected right and that allows you to give scale to your object it also helps it out with the alignment so once you've done that then you want to actually do the masking uh, and at this point the masking by background all you have to do is right click any of these images here Go to Masks, Import Masks, and then you want to make sure your method says From Background, your operation is Replacement, and that your file name template is going to be the exact file name that you just put in for that image, for the empty scene. Right? So whatever that empty scene image, you put it somewhere, make sure that you name it something that you know that you can just type right back in here, because then it's going to look for that exact file name. Uh, then go to all cameras and hit OK. I have my tolerance set to 40. And then you want to point to the folder that contains that file. Now it's not going to be either of these because we moved it into this folder here that says photos. All right. So if it's in this photos folder you want to click it make sure it shows up down here. Then hit select folder and it's going to get started masking. Now, once it's gone through the process of masking, which it may actually take a little bit of time, um, you can check your masks by clicking over here and using this little mask visualization tool. 
right? And you can see that it automated masking for each of your photos, um, basically cutting out all the stuff in the background here. So anything that's going to be stationary. And this may or may not be necessary. It just depends on the photo set and the object. Uh, but I did find that it worked really well for this specific vessel. Um, sometimes you'll have luck not masking at all and only using the markers. Right? When you detect markers first and then you hit alignment, it actually does a pretty good job of stitching it together most of the time. And I've realized too that recently, if you look at the Align Photos um, part of the workflow, it has a little check mark next to exclude stationary tie points, and that actually also helps helps uh, with the reconstruction during alignment. Right. So once you've actually masked out all your photos and you get to the point where you're about to align, aligning photos, what I do is I'll go to apply masks to key points, and then I'll move on. Right. And that's what was able to get me this here with very very few tie points outside of the the area there. And you can try different things. You know, you can go ahead and, and try doing aligned photos uh, and have it set to applying masks to tie points. Uh, it's up to you, whatever works best for that object. I found more luck overall just using key points and masking those. Uh, but it's basically just masking out any features outside of the object itself, right? Not necessarily tie points, you know, but it is saying don't look at any of the features beyond the object. And that's pretty much what I have for masking using a background, um, taking an empty scene image and using it to mask the rest of your photos. Thanks for listening.